Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric with Bobcat Cam. And today we'll be going through a live event on Bob Art, being able to import an image or a PDF file and be able to vectorize it. So go from an image to a drawing automatically and then creating toolpath from there. We also have options for embossing in Bob Art, which is a more artistic way of, um, of extruding out solid models. So you have more of a artistic look to it. Uh, you could say for, for molds and also for uh, inlays, you could say also. So we'll take a look at some of those options with embossing and we'll start, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll start with the image options and vectorizing functionality in the Bob Art today. And please let me know if you guys have any questions here in the comments section. Um, again, we're just going through Bob Art today and uh, my name is Eric. I'm the demo tech here at Bobcad. So I normally do the demonstrations of the software program and also support tickets with tech support to help any customers out. And so, yeah, I'll get into version 35 here. And from here, I can go to the tabs from that window on the left-hand side that I just moved and the tab is called Bob Art. I'll open that. I'll right click on images and then I can load an image. So whether it is a JPEG file, a PNG, or any type of file format, uh, virtually any file format for images are loaded in here or any image is loaded in here. And I say virtually any file format. If it's any other type of file form, any other file extension here that's that's not located here and can't be opened, you could open the image in Paint on your computer and be able to save it as a JPEG file. So again, if it's not in here, you can save it as a JPEG. Um, the image that I have on my computer that I normally show under my demos folder here, I go to all files and I have an SVG file of this logo here that I can open and I can change the size of it that it comes in here once, once the image is opened in Bobcat. I can change the origin location. So if I don't want the corner up against the X and Y axis right here, I can simply click and drag it over, or I can type in the coordinates here of the origin point. I want that bottom left corner to be at. Um, I can change the size here. So it comes in at 7.3 inches in X. I can change it to 12 inches for the width. I can uh, keep the aspect ratio. So you can see the Y dimension changed along with the X dimension so that it so that the image doesn't stretch on me. Or if I want to uncheck this box, keep aspect ratio and make this image 12 by 12, I can definitely do that. Change the transparency if I want to, if I'm gonna be doing any sort of uh, tracing along the image. But this image comes in pretty well. If I zoom in, you know, in the corners here, there's maybe a little bit of pixelation. It might cause some, uh, I guess you could say discrepancies in with the, the entities here of the drawing. And I'll show you that. Um, it's not going to cause any issues. It will only cause, it, it'll create multiple entities in here than just the one line going across here. So if I click OK, I've brought in the image into Bob Art 
and into the Bobcad V35 software. I can right click on the image here that was loaded into the Bob Art tab. And then I have this vectorize option. So to go back, I right clicked on the images. Uh, you could say the images icon right here. I right clicked to begin with and selected load image to bring in this logo here, a 12 inch by 12 inch image. And it brings in an additional icon here under images for the logo. And then I right click on that one and I have the vectorize option. Now, right now it comes in blank and that's with this threshold value setting that I can change the slider to bring in the image that I'm seeing here. Now this threshold value, this slider bar, um, you can see once I get to about 40 or 50, it will become more pixelated and then eventually it'll just, became, it'll just become black. And the reason for this is because with this threshold value, what you can do with it is you can vectorize between the foreground of the image and the background of the, of the image. So if you've got some, you know, some animals or something in the foreground and some trees in the background of an image, you can select to vectorize just the trees or vectorize just the animals or whatever's going on in the foreground of the image, you could say. Um, so yeah, other than that, uh, we do have a two level strategy. So this is just black and blue. I don't have to worry about the multicolor strategy, but if I do have more than two colors in the image, I can go here and I have different uh, numbers of color options. So if I have 10 different colors within the image, I can select which color I want to be vectorized and which one I don't want to be vectorized. So another way of classifying what you want to be in the drawing versus the image, depending on number of colors and also depending on the foreground or the background of the image. So I'll go back to the two level strategy because this is just a very basic image and I just want to vectorize all of it. So I'm just using this threshold value of 22, somewhere in the middle between uh, foreground and background, you could say. And I will click OK. And I've got the image and the drawing showing at the same time currently. I can right click on uh, image lightning logo here, 2011. Um, I can right click on it and I can select blank. And it will blank out the image and it'll leave me with the vectorization here, the drawing. And again, if there was any tracing involved, like if I wanted to trace this line across or trace any, anything else in the image here, I can blank and unblank very easily with the I key on my keyboard. I is in India. I can show and hide the image whenever I want to. So I can zoom in and I can maybe delete this extra entity like I was mentioning earlier, uh, where you have, since there was little pixelation there, we've got a few additional entity rather than this just being one line, it's two lines and same with it over here. And so if I select this line and hit delete and I wanna know where exactly I want to create that point, I can show the image. I pretty much just want it down that way, but maybe I can trace it a little differently so that when I click on an endpoint, I can sketch it wherever I want to here, sketch it exactly at this location, and then I can hide the image and then just connect the two lines to each other there. You've got all the other CAD functions to work with. If I undo those two lines and I've still got that opening, I can go into the other utilities in Bobcad, go to trim two entities, for example, and 
extend out these two lines to where they both meet. So you've got a lot of options there once you bring in the vectorized drawing from an image. You can be able to manipulate the drawing with any of the CAD functions here in Bobcat. And once we've got the drawing created, I'll just go through a quick, you know, little demonstration of plasma, water, plasma, sorry, laser, plasma, and water jet <clears throat> machines here. You can go right to CAM, start a new job, and under milling, you have your laser, plasma, and water jet machining options here. Those would be included with any of the mill packages. So I'd select plasma, for example, our Bobcat plasma machine. I go through the stock wizard where I'm defining my stock. I'm making it a little larger than 12 by 12 because eventually this is going to be the outline of the part. So I'll go 14 by 14 and I'll make it half an inch thickness for my stock. If I revolve it around, we can see the half inch there. And so our next page is our machine setup. This is where we're defining our work offset at. And I'm setting a uh, work offset, uh, my G54 location. So in the G code, X0 and Y0 will be at this location for us. So I'm just doing a basic profile operation and basically just showing you that we can uh, select the geometry because they are just basic lines and arcs here from the uh, Bob Art vectorization process. And we've just got a profile finish cut. I'm just going to leave everything to what it is, but you know, with, uh, with plasma cutting, we do have options for tabs. So the parts don't fall down onto the table, setting the diameter of the cutter for the kerf to compensate for the cutter here. So maybe I'll just do uh, 50 thousandths and feed rate of, we'll say a hundred inches per minute and all the same you know, default settings here. I'll hit compute. We've got our tool path along the drawing that was vectorized and we can simulate and post the G code from there. So that's basically what it's all about with the vectorization process. If you guys have any questions with vectorizing, please let me know in the comments so that I can answer any questions. If you have any issues with the vectorization, um, any common issues we may run into, let me know so that um, I can help you guys out during the live event today. And yeah, so after the simulation, we just go to post. It'll generate the G code here in the right hand side. And then we can save and put it onto a flash drive and send it over to the machine. Yeah, so let me know if you guys have any questions with that. We just went through the vectorization process. I'll go over that again here just to revise. Uh, revise? Is that the word? A revision of what we did. Um, we can go to the Bob Art tab down in the bottom left corner. And here's one of the common issues. If you don't have the Bob Art tab down here or anywhere else on this two sides of your screen, you can right click up at the top here of version 35 and you have the different tabs or the different pages, uh, your different managers, I guess you could say, your data entry manager, your CAD tree manager, your CAM tree manager. Um, you have, uh, like for example, my UCS manager is hidden. It's not showing at all in version 35. Uh, I can show it again. And once I right click at the top, it's got a green check mark this time. And it's right here. Usually I drag this UCS manager into the posting manager and the layers and all of those. <clears throat> um, and usually my Bob Art page is over here on the left hand side. If I wanted to individually move it, I can click and hold on the tab 
and then just move it over. I can move it over to a second monitor if I want to while I'm doing this vectorization process here. I'll just move it back over here. Um, yeah, so to go over the vectorization process again, I'll go into a new file even, and we'll go to the Bob R tab. We'll right click on images, select load image, select the certain file type I'm using. It's not a JPEG for mine, it's, a, it's an SVG file. And then I just automatically clicked and dragged on it. But um, I can change the origin point here. Normally it comes in at zero inches by zero inches. So you've got the bottom left corner there at the CAD origin. And you can change the size here. You could even rotate it if you wanted to. If you wanted to rotate it 45 degrees, for example, it'll start rotating um, counterclockwise. And so I'll go in and make it a little wider than what we had before. Maybe we'll do 24 by 12. So a little distorted there. That's what the keep aspect ratio option is for. Um, but if I like this image, I can go to OK, click OK. I can right click on image and then the file name down here and click vectorize. I can change the threshold value, or I can do the multicolor strategy option. I can change the ac accuracy, so if it is a little pixelated like this here, an accuracy of 1 versus 0.8 would be a little bit stronger accuracy. Uh, would, it'll take a little bit longer vectorizing, but as long as you don't get into, like I think, like the hundreds or thousands in accuracy, it doesn't take too long. And then remove chains less than 10. So you saw that chain of two right there with that line. Um, if, you know, if we wanted it to be one line, we could select one, I suppose, but might have an issue with the arcs here. Um, but that's what all those options are for. And then we click OK. And then we've got the vectorization and the image at the same time here. I'll just right click on image and blank. And there's the drawing from the vectorization process. So I'll go to the uh, comment section here, see if you guys have any questions. Yep, so nothing so far. Looks like we've got um, yeah, Tatiana, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, we're able to answer any questions. We've got multiple people in here to help out uh, with any questions that, that you all may have. Um, and while I'm kind of taking a break, seeing if you guys have any comments, in the comment section, I'll leave our tech support phone number and email address here. Technical support. So technical support phone number is 727-489-0003. And our email address below that. Is support at bobcad.com. So if you guys have any questions at all, Maybe the software's running slowly on your PC. Maybe uh, you're having questions about completing a drawing, completing a 3D model, or anything like that. We do offer support plans. Uh, and if you're not on a support plan with us, um, you could have the option to have a support plan of one year or longer if you want to. And we are open Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So if anyone has any questions, if you're on a support plan especially, and uh, you have any issues with a drawing or a 3D model or anywhere stuck in the software program, let us know. Uh, we offer technical support. Um, if you're not on a support plan, we'll help with like crashing or something serious like that. But uh, when it comes to like a knowledge base, 
type of uh, learning and assistance with tech support. That's where tech support would come in. And also online training where we offer one hour and two hour sessions at a time. You can schedule that out. You could send us an image like we have here uh, or a vectorized drawing and going through the process of programming. It could be any type of file, you know, it could be a step file or even a Bobcat file that you're working on. And we'll go through the process of either the 3D modeling or drawing process or the programming process in Bobcat Cam. So it looks like there's no uh, questions so far. I'll go back to V35 here and I'll go to a new file. And we can go through that uh, vectorization process one more time and then go through the emboss option uh, from the drawing that I create. So I go and right click on images, load image, Select the file extension I have for my image. You know, if you go and Google an image and save it on your desktop or save it in your downloads, you look for that in here for the certain uh, file extension. Or if you don't know what it is, you can search all files down at the bottom. And I'll select SVG, this SVG file again. I'll make it, again, the whole process was just importing the image like this here, changing the size of it, clicking OK, and then back in the Bob Art tab, I would right click on the image file here and go to vectorize, change the threshold value to the cleanest image that I see here. You know, if I change it, it'll change the image accordingly a little bit so you can see there's some pixelation like right here i wouldn't want that kind of shaky image or drawing to come in so i move the threshold value a little bit more and click ok i right click on the image file and go to blank i've got my drawing and then i can emboss the drawing from the Bob Art tab. I can right click on emboss model and I can select any of these emboss options. However, it's going to bring me to this first page automatically, this edit canvas option. It's going to ask us to create a, a canvas size for our geometry to emboss onto. So basically it's a starting surface and I create the canvas size of 12 inches by 12 inches here and leave the same origin as I have for the image so that everything's lined up. And then I can go to the base height. So at zero, it'll just be a plain surface. At one inch, it'll have one inch thickness, just like a piece of stock in the cam process. So once I click OK, and it's got this canvas color, everything will be purple. Once I click OK, I've got a purple piece of stock, basically, one inch thick, 12 by 12 here. And then I can emboss from this, I, I would say piece of stock, but uh, then, you can em then you can extrude from the, or extrude or emboss from this original emboss here. I suppose here in Bobcat, we call it a, a canvas, which is kind of the, original shape of the emboss option here. If I right click on emboss model, then we have the other emboss options. So again, if I, uh, if I go to a new file, just to show you, just to kind of repeat myself, when I, am, when I right click on emboss model, uh, when I go to any of these emboss options, it will automatically go to this edit canvas option. So if I go to emboss regular in a new file that I haven't created a canvas for, it will go to that canvas definition page. I have to set up, you know, 12 by 12 or what shape you want there for the canvas and 
create it from there. But once I right click on emboss model with a piece of canvas already, it will have the emboss uh, page here. There are a lot of different options with the embossing here. Emboss regular, emboss swept, two rail sweep. So that, ha that normally has to do with like a closed shape like this here and I want to emboss across it. I know there's been a lot of files that I've seen with Bob Art. Um, when you get into the artistic side of it, it can be a really powerful um, artistic uh, emboss manager and you'll be able to save it as an STL file as well. So if you wanted to 3D print whatever you're doing here in Bob Art with the embossing, uh, that would be an awesome thing to be able to model something like this in here and then be able to 3D print it, for example. Um, yeah, so from here, go to the emboss options. Um, the first one I'll show you is the emboss regular. And I'll select the geometry. So I, I'm just going to window select my drawing that I have in here. It doesn't pick up the canvas, so I just window select everything there. I change the uh, way I want to emboss it with this cross section option. I'll just leave it to default so we can see the default setting and then show you different uh, options we have with the cross section here. So I'll click OK and we've got the emboss and this is a radius of a quarter inch like we just saw in the cross section here. And if I look at it from a side view, you can see that quarter inch radius. And you can see it's a little shaky here too. Um, I know by default, I mean, if you've got some, if, if you've got some clean entities, I guess you could say, or if you have a clean drawing where you just have single entities like on this side, you you get a really nice radius where on the other side, if, if, the, if the drawing is shaky, then the embossing is going to be a little shaky like this here. But we do have a smoothing option for this so that we don't have to go back to the drawing. We could right click on emboss model and go to smoothing. And smoothing window size is the strength of the smoothing, uh, I guess you could say like a, like a megapixel type of amount here, you could say, something like that. So when you click OK, it'll smooth it out with that strength, you could say, of 50 thou. And then if I change it to double, to 100, it'll be even, it'll be smoothed out even more. So a stronger smoothing tool, depending on the number you set in here. We have an additional smoothing tool in here than this one. So if you don't want to smooth out the whole emboss, the whole embossed model, um, you can use an individual tool, like a point and click tool, to, to smooth out areas maybe just in here rather than just the whole model. So if I delete the smoothing tool or smoothing application that I did, so you can see smoothing two under emboss model, I can right click on it and delete that and then right click on the emboss model at the very top here and you can regenerate. And that's where it will go back to that shaky embossed model that I've got. And from there, I can right click on emboss model and rather than smoothing, I can select sculpting. There is a sculpt, there is a smoothing tool here in the sculpting tool, I guess you could say. Um, so rather than just, uh, to deposit or remove is kind of deleting some of this area. I want to use the smooth method and use a different diameter size of this point and click tool. Maybe change it to one inch so I can so that I can smooth out a larger surface area at a time. And here's the strength option. So it was at 50 thou, just like the previous smoothing tool. I'll change it to 100 thou because I know the strength of, of what it was from before. And maybe I wanna go in the top right corner and just smooth out this area here. I can click and hold up, down onto my uh, left mouse button and then click okay. And then I can revolve it around. And so this has been pretty well smoothed out where the other areas you've got harder surface edges still. 
So if you wanted just an individual area smoothed out, that's under sculpting. If you want the whole embossed model smoothed out at the same time, that will be under smoothing. So a lot of different uh, options here. We'll go to the uh, we'll go back to the emboss regular function that I did initially here so that we can go to the cross section option. So we have a convex arc that we have here. We have a concave arc. We'll see how that looks. So you can see the graph here and that's how it would look on the left side of the model here. So it goes up, so it curves up to a peak and then becomes flat. Then our other option, so that's convex arc, concave arc, line is just going to give us a basic taper angle from that point up. And then we have a couple other options in here, convex or concave ellipse. So it won't be too strong of an arc, you could say there. It'll be more of an ellipse. <laughs> and then you also have concave ellipse. We can take a look at that. And then the um, spline and custom option. These two are custom options where you can set the start point, the midpoint, and the end point of the curve so that you can change how you want your how you want your emboss to look like. Maybe I'll do some kind of parabolic wave like this. I haven't even haven't necessarily tried this before, but maybe bring it up higher like that. And then dip lower. And so we'll click OK. And so yeah, whatever type of shape you want in that graph, you can change it and change the way you want it to emboss that way. Um, you can see it comes up to some high peaks uh, in these areas. So if we wanted to go and I'll use the all around smoothing tool and just leave it at that strength. And so it smooths out a lot of those high peaks. But yeah, that's our emboss option. We've got a lot of options in there to, uh, oh, one other thing, if I could go back to the cross section and make it more basic here. We can we have the add option so that'll create the positive of it or the negative of it would be uh, under these icons here the application type rather than add it'll be subtract. And this Bob Art emboss generator you could say uh, it's pretty powerful where you can create this embossed model and you can see in the next embossed model you would create, you have these other two options, these merge high and merge low. So the merge high would be where uh, whatever the highest peak is for two different embossed models, it will go to that highest peak and emboss low is where if you have two embossed models combining with each other, the lowest point will be uh, shown and anything higher than that will be deleted. So you have a couple other options there with your modeling, your 3D modeling options with the emboss model functionality here. So other than that, Trying to think of other emboss options. Uh, another one with this one here is uh, we could create this for four axis. Um, trying to remember how to where that function is. I think it's under emboss model. Actually, I think it's under regular emboss. Maybe, maybe not. No, no maybe it's under emboss model. Do, 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 do. Well, here is where you can save whole emboss as an STL file. You just, once you've got all of the uh, smoothing, sculpting, and adding to the embossed model, you can right click on embossed model and go to all the way down to the bottom, save whole emboss as component or STL model. And you can even set the units you're using here. 
and the coordinate system you're using if you want to leave it at that or if you want to leave it at the local art model which is the the coordinate system you created in bob art click ok and then you can save the stl file anywhere you want on your computer to be able to 3d print it or send it out to whomever you'd like to and from there um yeah from there i'll try to find the four axis option so it'll be uh it'll it'll create a cylindrical shape of this square part so that you can do the inlay of this in four axis around a cylinder um, if i can find that from component from image regenerate edit canvas that's probably it Yep, so if I right click on emboss model and go to edit canvas, at the very bottom, we have this wrap canvas option. So wrap canvas, it, once I check that box, it'll give us a few more settings here. So I can select wrapping diameter. I can select it to be whatever I want it to be if I wanted to stretch it out, or if I want just the full cylindrical wrap so it's just going to go full one time around. I'll just click that button and it'll bring that default number in there for me and leave it at the same origin. It's going to go around the X axis for this or if I want it to revolve around the Y axis, I could certainly do that and then click OK. And then now I've got the, uh, now I've got the shape. So this 12 by 12 shape wrapped around with a, uh, what was that last part? The uh, the diameter. So this is three point eight. This is three point eight inches in diameter for this shape. If I go back to that edit canvas and change the uh, wrapping diameter from three point eight to we'll say six inches, then it'll do more of a semicircle with it still wrapped but not fully wrapped around uh, for a 12 by 12 shape. I suppose we could do the math to find out what half of that would be, or we could also just go into edit canvas, click on that button full cylindrical wrap, so we're back to 3.8, and then I'll just double it by two. And I believe that'll just give us a semicircle. Let's see. Mm, might be. I think it is. Because double the diameter would give us half of the end product, I would imagine. Let's make a line to see how close we are. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's right on the money. So all we have to do is to make half or to make quarter or, or what have you, you just go to the Bob R tab, right click on emboss model and go to edit, edit canvas. This was our first, uh, what would you call it? This was our first application that we went to with the emboss options so that we could create the square canvas, but rather than a square canvas, if we want a cylindrical, canvas here, we can go to uh, wrap canvas and change the uh, wrapping diameter. If I want to click on this button, it would give me a full cylindrical wrap with my 12 by 12 shape. Or maybe if I multiply by two, I'd get a semicircle. If I multiply by four, I'll get a 45 degree uh, amount. And then I'll have another what would that be? 315, not 315. Yeah, 315. No, the 315 degrees of just flat for my cylinder and 45 degrees for my shape here. Mm, it might not look like 45. I'm not sure about that. But you can play with the numbers there. I know there is, or that there are some 
geometric formulas you could use to change the shape to what you want for your cylinder here. And that's under the oops, that's under the edit canvas and wrap canvas. And you can change this wrapping diameter to what you need. Um, I'll leave it at double the diameter. Click OK. You can take a look at that there. Uh, actually, if we do a full wrap, I don't know how it would save as an STL with this. But with a full wrap, I believe we can save as an STL. We can, you could say we could uh, fill in that gap, I guess you'd say. I'll name this one test one. Test one STL. Yeah. Test one demo. And then from there, we can try to do the full cylindrical wrap and try to, I might need to create an extrude boss for it. I'm not exactly sure if we can create a, uh, an STL file for a wrapped shape. That's the only the that's the only limitation I can think of really. But if we go in and open that STL file again, that was test one demo. We've got our shape here. Uh, I've got my shape that's not a full cylindrical wrap here. But if I know the size, which I could go back here and get the size of it that I need. Go to the side UCS and create a circle at that diameter. Divide by two for this model, or multiply by two for this model and then extrude it out 12 inches for the width of it. Not sure if we can get an STL with it or not. Actually, it looks like we need the uh, size of the cylinder to be a little bit smaller. So if I went back to the circle Rather than it being perfect, 7.6394, we'll do 7.5. So we can get some kind of shape on the outside here. And then I will save this one as an STL file and see how it comes in. STL, I'll just overwrite this one. And then all I have to do is close out of it and reopen it. The STL file here. And yeah, looks good. If I go to evaluate, go to measure one, I can pick the solid. And it'll tell me it's an STL model with this number of triangles because it is considered a triangular mesh file, is what an STL file is. If I zoom in, I can see that, they, that these are just very tiny triangles to create, the, to create the STL model. I wouldn't even consider it a solid because there's no surfaces, there's, there's no volume to it. It's just a hollow STL file, you could say. Um, but anyways, or a mesh file, it's considered a mesh file, an STL file. It's also considered triangular mesh. So, uh, so you would have a hard time with uh, programming an STL file like this. You know, you don't have any surface edges for it. Um, 
So programming with an STL file, you'll want to bring either bring it back to a step file or some other type of file that has surfaces on it. But I would say the same with this process. You could easily uh, create the STL file for it just by going to Bob Art, right clicking, going to save whole emboss as component STL, do the same process as I did here in test one demo. You just create a cylinder with that size or a little bit smaller, and then uh, extrude boss to create the, uh, the solid inside of it or create the area inside of the cylinder here, and then save that as an STL file. Um, but yeah, I'll bring this back to something little normal looking. We'll go here to edit canvas and not have it wrapped around a cylinder. And from here, as an STL file, you would still be able to select the model as geometry for programming. So really quickly, we'll go through the programming side of an embossed model. It's the same workflow, just creating a new job from the cam tab. It'll be a milling job type, select a three axis milling machine. I can define this as my workpiece, labeled art model. I can define this as my stock that I'm starting with, as I'm milling inside these areas here. I can define my work offset if it's not at the bottom left corner here, and then click OK. I can right click on the machine setup and go to mill three axis. Select this as my geometry. I can even select any part of the vectorized drawing as my boundary. I can go in and do a basic uh, or an advanced rough here. Use a half inch end mill and do a small, sort of a small uh, step over and step down just so that I know I'll have tool path in here. Very fifty bow and hit compute. But again, to have that boundary, that wireframe for your boundary is very useful because after this roughing that's done, computing, I can select that as my boundary for my finish pass. So I don't have to. For my finish pass, I just want to do a basic planar operation, I think, or maybe equidistant for a spiral toolpath. Um, and if I were to do either of those and I don't have the boundary, it'll mill on top of this lightning bolt shape and the circle around it. And I don't want to mark up that area. So we've got our toolpath here for the roughing, and then I'll do a tool path for the finish. It looks like for the finish, it's not marking that up without a boundary because there's no stock to be uh, milled out for the roughing. But for the finish pass, I do want to select that as my boundary. I just go in, select this as my geometry, select this as my boundary. I can also hide the embossed model with E as in Edward on my keyboard, you can see that it is not showing at the moment so that I can chain select my geometry. And if I hit E again on my keyboard, it will show or hide the embossed model. So E for emboss is an easy way to remember that one. I to show or blank the image, I for image easy way to remember those. Um, then I'm just using a half inch ball end mill to take a look at that in the simulation and just a normal step over, just leave it at what it is there. Hit compute. That one shouldn't take as long because it's a smaller, it's even a smaller step over than the roughing. But while that's, uh, while that's going into simulation, loading the simulation up, I'll check to see if you guys have any questions there. Do do show the images that you guys use.
So Dale, should the images that you guys use in these demos be included in the software that is on my computer? Um, good question. So at this live event, it is not, uh, this image is not provided in there. Um, after the simulation here, I can show you different images that we have uh, with training that you, that you could use. Pretty much uh, in with that. Still loading my simulation here. There we go. All right, so with simulation, we can take a look at the uh, cutting time and and those kinds of settings there. We can see the uh, three-axis milling here from the embossed model, and this is the roughing. Probably should have done a faster or a uh, larger step over and step down, but we can either skip to the next operation or I can move this slider bar over if I want it to move over just a certain time amount there. Maybe the first few passes of the roughing, the first few hundred passes. And once that loads all of that process, then I can run from there. So that progress bar down at the bottom here with this tick, I can click and drag it over. And at this tick mark right at the end here, that's where our finish pass uh, starts. So most of this is all the roughing here. And then the next one will be the finish pass. So a really quick finish operation there. I can go to the previous op and oh, no. yeah. So after simulation, we can close out of it and then again post the G code, save it, send it to a controller. Um, but yeah, just to show you that we can work off of an embossed model. Um, the only difficulty will be the boundary or could be a, a difficulty there i mean if you're just doing a roughing like this here then you don't need it um, or if you already have the, the boundary drawn from the vectorized image then that's all you need for your boundary it's going to be a lot of g-code and once that's finished um, we'll go back to uh, your question, Dale, about the images. So, like we said in the comment section, you can uh, Google any image that you want. You know, it's up to your imagination, whatever image you want to bring in. Um, when it comes to training, um, that's a good point to, uh, sh like, maybe share this image next time with you guys, and uh, you could follow along. Uh, mostly there and um, but we do have some images that are uh, automatically in Bobcad for you guys and some step-by-step uh, -step, uh, tutorials on on those and I have to try to refresh my memory it's going to be under file and it's going to be under help and I believe it's under the Bobcad cam help And then we have some, uh, let's see, it's not a registration, it's not introduction. 
geometry, tech support and training, uh, probably under tutorials. And then we have Bob Art tutorials here. We have other ones we have. So yeah, under file and then help and then Bobcad cam help. It's basically a manual to our software program. We have different chapters under CAD, under cam, under Bob Art. Um, we also have a search box. So if you want to search something, you can definitely search with certain keywords. Um, then we've got tutor tutorials in here. Uh, so under Bobcad tutorials, how to create an emboss. Or there's another one that's bowling sign tutorial and how to create an emboss from an image. So pretty much all we went over today, how to create an emboss, how to create an emboss from an image. I think there's a there may be a vectorization tutorial in here. Um, but what you can do is, I believe, let's see, open the example file. Select the folder. You saved the example file. So do, 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 do. So it'll actually give you the file to download. However, I know that these are saved locally on your computer by default. If you go to your file explorer, you go to this PC on your computer and go to your C drive, go to Bobcad Cam data folder, Bobcad Cam V35 or whatever version you're using, if it's 34 or 33 or what have you. So you'll open Bobcad Cam V35. You'll open examples. And then you'll open demo files. Nope, sorry, not demo files. Uh, maybe getting started. Nope. And this, this might be it here under examples. Do, do, do. Oh, Bob Art. <laughs> there we go. So C drive, Bobcat Cam data, V35, examples, and then there's a Bob Art folder, and then there's images. So there's some of these tutorials that will say open up this lion image, and then uh, you can emboss from the image or this toucan, for example. Um, there's a lot of uh, different tutorials in here. This one is the pig emboss, and I think that's under Bob Art files. Yep, so you've got a pig art emboss Bobcad file in here by default. Um, you can download it here from our website, or you can open it from Bobcad from the file explorer location there. So you could either drag and drop it here or you can uh, find it from V35. So it brings in this drawing and you have the different emboss options. So you emboss uh, the pig's eyes, the pig's snout and his ears and everything to create. Do we have it here? Everything to create this embossed uh, embossed model with different Z levels for the pig's snout versus his ears and eyes, head, body, and all that. So this is, and, and here's a tutorial, here's a written tutorial on how to create each of those embossed models there. The colors, I mean, I guess the colors would be helpful for distinguishing the different levels of the embossed model. It's not really necessary unless you want to take a maybe a screenshot of it at the end here once you're done. But yeah, um, that file location may be helpful for you, Dale. Uh, it's under C Drive, Bobcat Cam Data, Bobcat Cam V35, Examples, Bob Art, Bob Art Files. And under the Examples folder, there's a lot of other uh, example files for you if you, I mean, even indexing, mill turn, extrude boss, extrude cut. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of helpful example files in this folder. I'll leave that up and see if you guys have any other questions there. But yeah, the um, 
The point of Bob R2 is that we can open any image from Google that that we may find. Um, I even, there was one, I, I may have it in my local files here, but I did a demo recently for a customer that wanted to see an embossed model of Mount Rushmore. Thought it might, it might be a little too difficult, but I got something out of it. Um, because there is one other setting in here other than loading the image, vectorizing. Under the emboss model option, uh, we do have this emboss from image option. That's a way to emboss a model automatically from the image instead of having to go through the vectorization process, through um, creating more construction geometry for your embossed uh, images there. You just go from emboss from image, you create the uh, the size of it. I think the image size that I had was somewhere around 24 by 12. So I'll do that. And then click OK. And then it's going to ask me to um, see that was the edit canvas option. Now I'm going through the emboss from image option to load my image here. And it's either on the desktop or my downloads, hopefully. That might work. But yeah, just to show you, I mean, there's anything you find online. I mean, I found a Model T from a previous project, um, Cowboys sign from a previous project. Hurricane path. <laughs> um, let's do the go-kart parts here. If we open up this image, okay, it's pretty small, but I can change the size of it. I'll make it 24 by 12. I'll stretch it out a little bit, but that's okay. 24 by 12. Click OK. And then it's got basically what you would consider like an etching of the image to the embossed model. So again, that was from embossed model and that was embossed from image. And if I go and edit that embossed from image function, I can change the Z depth here from 100 thou which makes it look like it's just a basic etching here and make it a quarter inch. And that'll have higher peaks for the emboss from image here. Now it is a little shaky. You can see based on the image that is brought in, it's just a grayscale image that we had before. I can find it here. doesn't let me show it in here. Edit image using paint or reload image. Yeah, I mean, we can take a look at, oh, I think I found Mount Rushmore here under downloads. But, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. It's, it's basically just to show you, if you Google any kind of image, you can emboss any image you find from Google. Being able to right click on emboss model, Always got to go to edit canvas first. I'll do 24 by 12. Click OK. I've got my canvas size now. Right click on edit model. Go to edit uh, emboss from image. Load image. I'm going to look at my downloads and it was right here, I believe. There we go, <laughs> search for it. And so open it, and then maybe I'll change the size of the Mount Rushmore size here. Make it 24 by 12, click OK. So with a vectorization process, this would be almost impossible because if you think about
you think about the um, if you think about the trees in the foreground, in the background you have Mount Rushmore. Um, you have all of the rock, the marbling of the rock, you could say, um, and then all of the rocks down here in the foreground. That'd be almost impossible to be able to get any kind of good vectorized drawing from this image um, to be able to emboss it. However, this emboss from image option gives you a great way to just load this image, set the total depth. So again, I'm going to change it from a hundredth out of a quarter inch Z depth so that it'll emboss a quarter of an inch out. I zoom in again, kind of an etching here and it's kind of shaky, uh, especially, I mean, but you can see like the trees in here and stuff. Um, but it is a bit shaky where I can go into that smoothing tool and smooth it out afterward. And there you go. Now the nose for Jefferson and uh, Teddy there looks like they're cut off, but that is because of the image itself. So you may want, you may need to import a different image than this, or you may want to just do uh, Washington here, um, or may just get the emboss from Lincoln here. But if I blink the image, or sorry, blink the emboss and look at the image to try to see why that happened, it's because of the shadows. Yeah, so the, the shadows of the image completely took away Jefferson's nose, and mostly took away Teddy's nose and mustache there. And the eyes with the glasses maybe doesn't come out too well. But, I mean, it's a very intricate image, and you may just need to find a different image than this that doesn't have any shadows like this here that could be causing problems with the distinction of the different colors of uh, of the colors in the image. And that's why the, the eyes are kind of weird here for Washington and Lincoln. You know, you've got very large eyes, kind of like an outline of the eyes, I guess you could say. But that's because of the shadows there. So any kind of image that you may have a better, uh, better definition of, of what, what you have, for your image, emboss from image would be perfect. Uh, if you don't, if, if it would be too difficult to vectorize, you can just go to emboss from image and then uh, use your smoothing tool to smooth it out from there. But yeah, today we went over a few things in the Bob Art module. We went through vectorizing from an image, so importing from an image, vectorizing from it and even doing the toolpath from the vectorized drawing and do anything that you'd like in CAD with the vectorized drawing afterward. Um, from that, we did the emboss from image. Uh, sorry, we did the emboss from uh, the drawing, a regular emboss. So this one here was where I vectorized, vectorized the image and then created the emboss from the vectorized drawing from the image. And then what else did we do? We did the wrap canvas option for the emboss model. That was with this one here to create the STL file. And that was under emboss model, edit canvas and selecting this to be a wrapped canvas and whatever the uh, wrapping diameter was that I wanted. So maybe if I change it to 10, it'll be more of like a semicircle, half of a wrapped diameter where the rest of the diameter of the cylinder would be smooth if I were to create an extrude boss for this. And so from the wrapped canvas option and the emboss from uh, regular emboss from a drawing.
Then we go over to our uh, emboss from image where automatically from an image you can emboss uh, the whole image there. I know in the tutorial it goes through, it goes over that lion emboss from image. So in the tutorial, if we go to file help, Bobcat cam help, it does tell you to go to that file path from the emboss image option here. So if I went to emboss from image, I would load image and I would go to that file path. It was under C drive, Bobcat cam data, Bobcat cam V35, examples, and Bob art. And then images, it's got that lion. And then I believe it tells us to emboss from that image, change the Z depth, I'm sure. And this is what our emboss from image tutorial is all about, going from that lion image and then going and smoothing it out from there. There you go. From this STL file, you can uh, you could 3D print this, or you could also uh, run a three-axis toolpath on this and uh, rough it out and do a finish pass to get a good, what would you call that, an inlay of the lion or an inlay of the, uh, of the Mount Rushmore image, you could say. Yeah, different options like that. Or an etching. But yeah. That's what we went over with the Bob Art module today. If you guys have any questions with that, please let me know in the comments section before I wrap up here. Um, probably just finish off with that embossed in, uh, embossed model there. Um, all right, so I'll go to the comment section, see if you guys have any questions uh, with the Bob Art module today. And we went over vectorize, emboss, emboss regular and emboss from image. Um, yeah, let us know if you have any questions in the comment section there. Thank you for everyone viewing the live event today, being here live with us. Um, and also in the comment section, please let us know if, if there's any uh, modules you guys are wanting to see in the, uh, in the next ones. Yeah, ask what we would like to learn next. What What is the next lesson uh, on the docket for the live events? I just had, I'm, I just did a ticket in tech support today for a customer that was using Bobcam for SolidWorks mill turn. And he said, why are there no live events for the mill turn with V10? And they said, yeah, it's a great question. Obviously that's, you know, there's not as much of a, customer audience for that specific module, but uh, I'll definitely bring it up and I would love to do a, a, a live event on each one of the modules of our plugin for SolidWorks. Uh, we're up to V10 Bobcam for SolidWorks, and we also have a plugin for Rhino, which is Bobcam for Rhino V3. So if you guys have any questions with any of the modules uh, you'd like to go a lot more in depth like today with Bob Art, let us know because we'd like to uh, get your feedback and know exactly what live events we should be doing next. But I think it was a great time for a Bob Art event. Uh, we haven't done one since V35 came out a while ago, um, back in September, I'd say. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions with what we went over today in the comment section, let us know and let us know uh, what you'd like to view next time uh, so that it pertains exactly to what you guys want to learn about. Whether it's Mill Express, whether it's specifically for a, la a laser machine or a plasma machine, um, a laser engraver, you wanna do four axis on laser or you wanna be able to do mill turn, whatever module you guys are interested in, let us know and uh, We'll put that in, in our next upcoming live events here.
But yeah, just want to say thank you guys for viewing the live event today. And uh, we do have one next Wednesday, and we'll have one each Wednesday at 1 in the afternoon, just like this week. We went over Bob Art, and we'll be going over some other uh, basic machining practices in the next few weeks, and then probably getting into more technical stuff like mill turn for the later weeks to come for, for other customers. And thank you guys again for viewing the live event today. Hope to see you guys next week at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Wednesday, for the next live event. And until then, have a great rest of your day there. Thank you. Take care.